Through my business, I've met a whole lot of self-made millionaires. I've joined these ladies for weekly calls and dinners, trips to hangouts on my couch, and I've learned a lot from them. Ways that they think, ways that they prioritize their time, ways that they learn, and ways that they operate. I have seen the habits and the mindsets that they have, which has them blowing past their competition when others in the same industry are struggling and yet they are thriving. Now, these are all women who I'm gonna speak about in this video. They all run online businesses and they mostly sell courses or coaching. But don't think it's just the business coaching, coaching business owners on how to business coach. There are admittedly a couple of those, but the vast majority of the people who I'm speaking about here, you would never expect their business topic to make millions. We're talking things like childhood trauma healing, educational resources for teachers, feng shui, those are the sorts of really random topics that their businesses are on. Now here are the most important lessons I've taken away from my time with them. First, they create content. A lot of content. They know that content is the fuel of the online business engine. It is the gas which keeps the car moving, and so they focus their effort on content creation accordingly. Interestingly, most of them actually do a podcast. Some of them do YouTube. Many of them blog, but they don't blog alone anymore. Some of them do social media, but some of them completely aren't on social at all. Now, interestingly, with the fact that most do a podcast, I don't think that a podcast is the only medium to be successful, but I do think that it is the most high touch, least effort format. And with these women, as we're about to learn, they are extremely conscious of how they spend their time and podcasting is relatively easy to produce. No one is getting by in the online business world these days without content creation. So if you have dreams of taking your business into the millions and you're not creating content right now, it's time to get on the content train, my friend. Second, they focus and are extremely conscious about time wasting. Now, one thing which I found extremely comforting and which made me really optimistic was that most of these women have children. Again, these are millionaire self-made women and they have children at the same rate as the non-millionaire women. According to the New York Times, 86% of women ages 40 to 44, that is near the end of their reproductive years, are mothers. And then when I did a quick observation of the women I know who personally have made million dollar businesses, about 85% of them past the age of 40 to 45 have children. So these women have children just as often as women who are employed or women who have smaller businesses. So it's not because they don't have kids that they have more time to create content or have more time to work on their business. And from spending time with them, the thing which I think makes it possible for them to have extremely successful businesses and also have children is that they get way more strict with their time than most people do. They will ignore messages that are unimportant. They will just completely eliminate projects that are time intensive, but aren't that profitable. They don't spend time going to calls or trainings which don't directly relate to what it is that they want to learn or work on in their business at this very moment. They focus on the important stuff. And when I say important stuff, I mean the primary metrics that they're looking at are one, their email list size and the thing which feeds their email list, which is the metric of the content they're creating and how that content is doing. And then the second metric they're looking at is profit. Now, contrary to popular belief about female CEOs being absent parents, if anything, I find that these women probably have more time to be with your kids than your average employee. Because from my interactions with them, I've noticed that they set up a business to optimize time for family. Now, they're not eliminating time with kids in order to have more time for work. Instead, they're focusing on a few important projects at work when most people are distracted by all of the shiny objects in order to make the most amount of money in the shortest amount of time so they have more time for their families. Third, most have personal brands and they get super personal. Now some personal brands are very like, hi, I'm Jessica, here's what I do. Other personal brands, the ones that these women run are on a whole different level of personal. We're talking hella personal, personal brands. They share about their lives and their kids and their struggles and their wins. They share stories that most of us might cringe at the thought of sharing. The content that they create is like the content that they would share with a best friend. They definitely have boundaries and they do not share everything, but they will go there and share stuff on certain topics that others might not feel comfortable with. Denise Duffield Thomas shared a blog post, which I loved, entitled, I'm a self-made millionaire and this is exactly how much help I have at home. Now, some people would be really afraid to share the fact that they don't do their kids' laundry or make them lunch online. They'd be afraid of being shamed, but Denise wasn't. Another mastermind friend of mine, Lisa Johnson, shares screenshots from her Stripe account of what has gone into her business bank account this month. 
Now, a lot of people wouldn't do that, but don't take this to think that if you want to be successful, you need to share all of your dirty laundry on the internet because these women are definitely selectively sharing and not everything which is going down in their lives and their businesses is making it online. But generally, they're a little more open to being open than your average business owner, I find and they build more personal, personal brands. Instead of sharing content like, here's the five things to do to grow a business, they would instead share something like, here's five things I did to grow a million dollar business. Now there's a difference between those two pieces of content. There's stories and their life in the second piece of content, but not in the first piece of content. So again, that's an example of what I mean by more personal, personal brands. Fourth, they are obsessed with their business topic. There is a level of passion and excitement and honestly, insane work output, which comes with being obsessed about your business topic. So if you don't wake up thrilled to work on your business, it might be a sign to switch business ideas to something you're more passionate about because it takes passion to show up and talk on the same topic for five years, 10 years, or 15 years. And most of the times, these businesses weren't million dollar businesses in year one or two. I actually can't think of any that were. Most often, it is a good few years until they get to the level that they're at. Now, these ladies might make a slight pivot in their businesses over time, but generally, they've become known as the go-to expert on a certain topic and have stuck with that rough topic for years. So knowing this is all well and good, but how can you make your first steps towards a million dollar business? Coming back to what I said earlier, it's about focusing on the important needle movers, like list building. If you're not sure where to start on list building, then watch this video next and I will share exactly what I would do if I were starting my email list all over again. 